Hey guys, it's Rashidi here and I'm back with another heretic video. This one is going to focus on carrying. I'm going to be talking about the main weapons that I use and what I recommend for carrying higher tier stuff. So that would be Valleys of the Gods. I think Valley of the Gods is the only and normal tier 10 boss dungeons those are the two things that i think would require such a drastic setup but one of the first items i would recommend would be as i keep saying the arisen feral archistaff and i still fill mine of blackened eyes because i want as much pet action rate as humanly possible i pair that with the staff of the chimera and that is for the berserk buff or the damage up and that gives 50 percent damage increase beyond that as i said the other time you can use pretty much any staff but you're gonna have to put blackened eyes or dark eyes of Kerberos in them. If you don't have those adornments, you must have at least one feral archistaff, if not two. But that's only if you don't have your staff of the chimera. If you have a staff of the chimera, this has to be your priority item. This item and then another staff. But if not, then are uh, feral archie staff and if you have no blackened eyes you have to use the feral archie staff and the staff of the chimera and you're gonna need to use the final horseman adornments that give action rate i think they give one percent action rate or there are the eyes of the bull's eyes yeah that gives action rate to at the cost of a little all right so uh, i'm not uh, what what are they called again yeah so these things the bestial eyes but this is for what would i say now i think this one takes just a little bit less mana than the final horseman adornments let me find those but you need some action rate adornments symbol symbol of famine pestilence famine no. pestilence nope wow doom okay so these are a good one too these are the ones i usually used but they take away a lot of mana but the 2% follower stats too, that makes your phoenix hit a lot when it does hit, they do add up when you put a few in. So these are good adornments if you don't have the blackened eyes. These are my priority picks. But as I said, the bestial eyes, they take a lot less mana. And if you're using a heretics robe, you're going to need to be watching that mana because you don't want to be popping mana potions in the middle of the run. But you don't really need to use your heretic's robe unless you have nothing else. What you do need is just a good, or I wouldn't say good because mine isn't good, but a decent Fayette coat. And it will protect you and keep you warm and stuff. And it will allow you to have a lot of mana. And then that way you can use the final horseman adornments. I hope I am being clear so far so the priority boots i'll go from best to worst would be the ash plum shoes for the temporary magic up and the one billion adornment slots for your azure pinions these pinions can be replaced by all sorts of pinions to be honest but i like maximum damage so i try to put as many damage adornments in as possible 
but you can use two percent ward adornments because this these shoes have no ward but you're gonna have so little ward anyway that 10 percent of 2000 ward or 10 percent of 20,000 ward is 2000 so do you really need 2000 extra ward or do you need like 200 extra magic so that's what you have to think about as for other options i would say balder boots found in the battlegrounds dungeon really good i guess i never told you where this was from but this is an event locked item and this is from the january event the phoenix the rise of the phoenix don't quote me i don't know what it's called but the phoenixes the red phoenixes the arisen phoenix that whole event has these boots but not those mobs so these boots specifically are found in dragon roost dungeons and they are found at tier 5 and at tier 9 i think a decent offhand for carrying dungeons i would say valleys would be harder to carry with this item but normal dungeons are relatively easy if you buff up and you have decent items and that's the amadan staff and it has the ability Lucanus. i have no, i've never tried to pronounce this word before and i thought it was actually Lucanus. so i'm gonna go ahead and not mention the name but refer to it by the ability and the ability does aoe damage and it also does stasis, which can immobilize any enemy it is procced onto. Meaning they will not, under any circumstance, get to use the turn in that turn. So this is a really good one. I would say this paired with if you're new, but you somehow manage to get your hands on this. Because this is a normal quality one. This is normal quality and it has 135 magic. So that's not the worst, but obviously it's not the best. So if you're just starting out and you manage to get one of these and you have something like a dynasty, that's a really good look for a safe build because the dynasty can proc the bleed, which will disrupt the critical chance of the enemies. So this is especially useful in places like battlegrounds where those things crit a lot as well as stuff just stuff in general because i think a lot of the mobs do crit because in valleys they do crit a lot too so just stuff in general but then like the arisen gods are not going to be affected by most status ailments bleed included i think i don't think i've ever seen them being bled before uh if that's the proper way to say that but for the normal mobs which the normal mobs in berserk form are some of the most terrifying creatures available in dungeons a lot of the times the arisen bosses are pretty much child's play because more often than not when you do die in dungeons it's from some berserk random mob like a nidhog or something like that so i think that should be safe mode if you're going for like a safe earlier build that you won't be killing everything in the first turn but you'll have a little ward you'll still have a bit of foresight this thing gives even a bit of res interesting and you'll still have that chance to freeze them after that we have oh, i've already showed the top so the the thing i recommend here would be the and i don't know why it's down here i guess because it's tier 9 would be the tarnished king's crown and that's because it too has a lot of adornment slots so you get to put a few pinions in or you can support the ward in it or you can you can put stuff like moon dust in it that gives a little bit of magic and a little bit of dexterity if you find that you are missing a lot 
because dexterity actually does matter a whole bunch especially if you're going to be using this carry build on heretic because deity has base dexterity that is like the highest among all classes so if you're using deity then you're pretty much fine but heretic if you can slot something in that has a bit of dexterity if you have no other option if you can't get the extra magic in i would say dex is another really really good stat to try to build up so this crown has foresight as well and you know that if you're party carrying especially you need to be going first i think i have a gauntlet i just saw a notification no i don't all right so another good option as usual would be the balder hood and that's because it gives a bit of hp a bit of ward and it's just overall a decent item and it gives you the curse immunity which in my build i don't have so i usually need a inquisitor to cleanse me or i try my best to not die to the curse damage another good option is obviously your old northern crown because it's a really decent item and you don't want anybody giving you temporary magic down so it's pretty decent for pvp especially i don't use mine at all for some reason but i might find a use for it at some point honestly because it's really interesting and it has a decent bit of stats and it even gives a little bit of mana it's not the worst but i just prefer the raw damage and the rawness of the tarnished king's crown another option is the ash plumbed hood if you don't have the boots because this one gives a lot of adornment slots too it gives the temporary magic up the sacrifice would obviously be your ward and the foresight the foresight would be more of a miss than the ward i think so i'll just show my end all be all build and as you know when you're dual wielding the stats are penalized so you have to take that into consideration and that is one of the reasons obviously because you need the best quality for the best stats but that's one of the reasons you really need the best quality stuff because you really want to be stretching those numbers so i didn't mention the lugos gauntlets before but essential essential items because they give the temporary magic up the three arrows that is 100 percent then you have the other 100 percent from the ashen phoenix and you achieve that often by having the blackened or dark eyes of curb slotted in so that they help to help him activate his spells because without them you're gonna find that it's a very forgetful creature uh, i don't know i don't want to make excuses for him but he's kind of lazy so you need the adornments to spur the actions so that's why i recommend if not blackened eyes or dark eyes of kerberos you definitely need the symbols from the final horseman and they'll give you two percent stat bonus on the pets too so not a bad second choice but i love more action rate rather than the the damage increase but it's up to you you can test both i've tested it before and i didn't i didn't get the defic channel proc as often as i do now so I definitely recommend the blackened eyes and as i said the heretics robe is up to you if you want to bring it in it it drastically increases the mana cost 
of each spell so you have to take that into consideration and it takes a little bit of your overall defensiveness being a damage item pretty much because you realize there i'm not even i don't even have many pinions in yet i have negative 29 defense but this is one of the reasons why i don't defensive buff because i have like 300 400 defense at best in this gear so if i were to waste turns then again i'm gonna show you guys in a second so let me invite over my partner and we're gonna show you what the typical run looks like in this gear we're gonna do some battlegrounds and some dragon roosts i might do a valley if there is interest but i imagine most persons aren't trying to learn to carry valleys they're trying to be carried through valleys so it's better to just start at the medium tier stuff so brb again oh you're here okay well i'm gonna show them because a lot of persons always ask why bard instead of charmer so bard has mages dance <laughs> it's the thing um the battery low bard has mages dance which has a power of 2019 to 9600 so the minimum power is 2000 look at charmers mages purveying 483 so you'll be hitting a zillion on the high end and then find a way to be hitting 36 on the low end so this is why charmer is pretty much useless for carry builds because it will disappoint you more often than not it's better to just have a balanced damage of non-elemental damage so this is why you can't use something like chrono or uh, i think sequencer actually has no not sequencer magi has yeah this is why you wouldn't use stuff like this because this has the maximum end of the bard power so you'll be getting hits good hits each time if they weren't immune or resistant to the elements so this is why persons don't use this either and chrono now i don't remember why it's bad but it's actually really bad and it's actually the high end damage too so i don't remember why it's bad but it's it's terrible it's so bad but i need to try it out i might try it one of these days if not this video i guess i could since i lost interest in ascending i do have horns to spare but i'll just show you guys the normal bard carry and then i guess i could show you guys charmer and uh, maybe chrono oh babe are you in the party All right, you can start yours. Let me double check. Did I switch the bar? Okay. And make sure you have on your your God forging stuff too. Your, your shield, the Arizon shield. You can start. Uh, All right. It's just us. So this is how I buff for these things. And you'll realize that it's a bit risky. But it usually works out. But I've not tried this two manning before to be honest. So it's a lot more damage to take. But I'm going to ask daniela to stun the the berserk enemy but she's getting a call right now oh, oh my god and she misclicked gg gg well played 
Okay, I'm pretty much buffed now though, so should be fine. And he somehow got stunned. Uh, so we're not buffing properly because there's a distraction, but usually Daniela's first two turns, if it's just us, would be used to put Rampart Rampart 2 on me. So I move from 25% absorption of ward to 50%. So it's harder for me to die and then I can heal up and I'll still have a bit of ward left. But... I'm gonna get it now, I think. You want Rampart? Yes, Rampart. <laughs> <laughs> I remember the last thing I remember doing. Yes. Remember your person continue. Mm -hmm. If I had uh, Mecha Staff, Fey Mecha Staff, is it? Is that what it's called? Oh my god, I don't want to say the wrong thing. But that one from Arizon Mori that gives the magic up. I could also get that, but I'd need to pair it with my Chimera Staff and lose the Fira Staff, which I wouldn't mind doing, honestly. And I do have one, I think I have an Arisen one, but not the Fae. But usually two buffs are enough to carry me through stuff like this, but valleys, you need every buff. Because you'll get the multipliers, so my Berserk buff has already activated. I have the Ashen Phoenix to thank for the Defic channel that's also up. And I already did Mimic's Mischief for the Magic up and I did Gate of Snatra for the other 50% damage up. And I have just enough mana to complete it and throw in throw in another spell if I need to. And I twin blast on turns that I don't need to waste magic or mana because I just need to save the mana just in case I need it. Because it is very possible for me to miss every enemy. Although that is very rare. But you never know and then you have to use it again and then you don't have the mana for it. You got something God Forge? The shield. Oh shit. Yeah, I think it is. I only put in the shield and your, your other best armor. But then again, no, I had in the crown. Oh God, no, it's a crown. The old Northern crown. But good enough. And like I said, we have just enough to clear this final wave. And we're good. Um, and I don't like using, like, say I have this to Godforge and it's not killing me by taking away 300 magic because I could. But I don't like carrying people like that because it's just, 
You see my urina? Yeah. Yeah, because we have the proper way now. So usually if I'm starting, she must put on ramper two on me first turn. Or I can actually get hit out and die. But beyond that, then uh, we are good to go. We are good to go. So I would put on Snatcher here. I could use a Berserk Mushroom, but I don't like wasting them like that. And I hardly ever die, so it's like I'm, I'm broken bad. But I wouldn't say this is the best way to, to, what would I call it now, buff up but it's just my way of going as fast as possible and i think that is the recommended method that i would say like just trying to go as fast as possible and even this like it disturbs me because i just feel like i'm going much slower than i could be going if i had my normal helm on but luckily i got a few multipliers there to help me and then as my mana is being drained i'm getting that multiplier so you get stronger as you go along but sometimes i'm just a bit cautious because i need to save mana so I can kill everything. Because if you run out of mana. And you are the only carry in a team. Then. It's going to feel miserable. Like it's going to feel so bad. And. I guess I should explain party tactics in general. Like. Support role. So Donela is just here to stay alive and to keep me cleansed. So that is her role. And that is a really good role because that keeps the carry from becoming frustrated and ending the run prematurely. Because it's really annoying to be carrying people and they're doing their thing they're doing 100 things and you're there trying to focus on not dying and carrying properly and then you need something like you need a cleanse i get stunned me being stunned means that on a wave i can randomly not attack and then not only am i subject to all the hits but everyone else is too and i still have to wait through everyone else's turn to get back to my turn so that i can clear the wave and then maybe during that turn something happens and someone dies and this is the thing now why i don't like when persons are just in very squishy gear when they're being carried because you only need to have one item on to Godforge at a time anyway. So it's best, it's best <coughs> to just bring the item you want to Godforge most along with your best gear. That way you won't become like a problem for the team. Because say the carry dies, which is very normal like that's that's to be expected because the gear is very squishy that is the trade-off for being the carry say the carry dies and now you need two turns to revive the carry someone who is squishy is now more likely to die next than anything else just because one they're squishy and two the mobs have one less person to target so that is the the hard part about that now when the carry dies everyone else has to be sturdy they have to be willing to 
I wouldn't even say willing, I would say able to withstand any type of damage that might come in. And damage will come in because remember, you're going to have one person focused on reviving. And then maybe another person isn't all that strong because they're expecting to be carried. So they can do a little damage, but they can only do single target damage. That means that they can kill one, but then there are still four or three left. Then, as I said, the squishy person might have already taken a bit of damage and is now looking to heal themselves on that turn because remember, when you're being carried, you're not going to get a turn every time. So you get a few turns total in the entire run. So you have to use those turns wisely. You don't want to be using those turns to be healing yourself. That is literally just you becoming a problem in the run. You want to be providing some type of... Because say I missed something or I didn't do enough damage to kill something. I still need it killed. Especially if I have my temporary buffs on. I don't want the wave coming back around to me. So I need the wave to be dead. So it's stuff like that, like just being an asset to the team. It does not take much. You don't get a lot of turns. Just being tanky. I would say you don't even need to help kill them, honestly. If it comes back around, it comes back around. As long as you're not dying in the run. And you're not using all of your turns to heal yourself or to ward then that is <laughs> no not you babe this is a this is a duo turn this is a duo run Ugh, i need a drink my throat feels very dry but yeah this is a two-man run so this is not a good run to explain stuff on because you would see you would see, but it's just going to take so long to do a four-man run right now that I just decided I didn't want to do that for the video. And I just wanted to relax and pretty much talk through it. Because I'm not even buffing properly or anything for these. I'm just, just chilling and we're just chatting. But these are some of the things. I know other carries might not say it, but these are some of the things that annoy the shit out of us. And I don't want to run with people who are just there to, to be run with. Like, they're just, they're, like, you just run with them because they're available. No. I want to run with some persons who, they enjoy playing the game. I've run with people before. They're playing League of Legends. They're playing Xbox. They're playing PlayStation. They get, like, 10 turns maximum. Over 20 turns. And when it's their turn, you have to be waiting for them to do something. You have to be pinging them on Discord. Asking them if they're frozen. Nobody wants to run with people like that. We all value our time in different ways. Because if you didn't think Orna was worth your time, you wouldn't be doing something else. Or, wait, sorry. Mm. If you thought Orna was worth your time, you wouldn't be doing something else. Yes. The most I'll do when I'm playing Orna is listen to stuff like listen to comedy in the background. If I'm just to focus and do it, I think that's just what I need to do. Especially when I'm partying up with persons, meaning I am now... holding their time hostage in a way if I am being incompetent or just doing all manner of evil while I'm supposed to just be honoring the run time running as fast as possible then I'll be able to do whatever else afterwards like runs don't even take that long and if you can't dedicate the time to runs I don't think you should be running with people because it's just... It's just no fun for anybody. Or run with like-minded persons then. Because I'm sure other persons are there who... They don't mind chilling and relaxing and 
talking and whatever but I like running with people who want the runs to be done as soon as possible. I want the rewards from the runs, not the actual runs. So <laughs> even my girlfriend just just um gang fingered me like yo because I wasn't pressing continue fast enough and we're supposed to be doing a casual run. I like running with people like that that value their time. Because we're spending a lot of time in the game. So we don't need to spend a lot of time doing one thing. Like, just try to do things as fast as possible. And you'll be really good at the game really fast. Or, I wouldn't say really good. I would say a higher rank. Because I don't know if ranking dictates how good people are. I don't know. I don't know how to think of rankings. Because rankings are something that you can pretty much pad. Hmm, I'm going off on a tangent now. But that's why I like party runs, to be honest. Just to accumulate boss scores and mob scores to gain in ranks. And then god forging stuff and getting stuff by default is a pretty good bonus. But I like climbing up the ranks and seeing, just seeing the progress and just knowing that I did all of that by myself or like, I guess with help from others too. But like, it's kind of like Iron Man mode from some games, but then you can party up and do it. So it's, it's, it's nice. I don't know what to say because it's a lot of effort from others that help us to be as strong as we are with wave vessel sharing and all the other types of sharing that goes on in the community but yet it's non-trade that's so crazy this is a really interesting game but yeah this is just a little chat i think most of my videos will be chats because it's just easier to have a casual little chat than to do the whole presentation type video for me because I don't know. I don't want to do that type of thing. I don't want to be like a YouTuber like that. I just want to make some Orna videos. Like you don't have to rate them. You don't have to like it. You don't have to subscribe and you don't have to comment. Like if you have something to ask, you can. Or you can find me in the discords too. I'm usually in the Orna Legends discord. That's from the popular YouTuber Shabash. His discord. I'm usually there. So you can always ask me stuff there. Or just ask persons in that discord stuff. Because there's a lot of really experienced and smart persons in that discord. So there's never really a need to comment on my stuff to ask anything. Unless you specifically want me to answer, then I have no problem. But don't ever feel pressured to do any of that stuff. So I think I've pretty much gone through. <laughs> what, what are you laughing at now, babe? Yeah, but, but, don't, but don't you have another one? Another dungeon. All right, I'm going to actually buff up fully like... Mm, I would buff for a normal party dungeon. So this is what I would do. I use Mimics first. I get Rampart. I use Magic Potion. I would be cleansed. I don't know how, what I'm wearing that is making me immune to curse. But literally every other Mimics. And I say that uh, every of 10 Mimics mischiefs that you do you will be cursed like seven times in my experience. So I'm kind of surprised I haven't been cursed. But yeah, then I use Snotra and then I just start. And then I'll just try to go as fast as possible to see. But this is my usual speed now. I'll just try to run through them. Like just try to spam it like hyper focus. Oh God, this, wow. Wow, wow, uh, try to stun him, babe. The immortal lord. Oh, he never stunned, but good, good, good. Good, he did not attack me. Please. 
but these these dungeons snotra in this dungeon especially is very risky because immortal lords literally they're they're second chancing at will like whenever they see my sprite just know i'm kind of surprised that one of a second chance but i'm not gonna question it because i just figured it's because i'm videoing he wanted to be polite thank you very much oh my god my battery's at five percent god damn i have been videoing for a while though to be fair I didn't even remember. Well, this will be the last dungeon. I hope this is useful to at least one person. But if not, I'll enjoy rewatching these. Because I find that I really like looking back at my older Orna pictures, especially before the updates. Very chill. Yeah, after this one. And thank you very much for watching, guys.